Viewers, welcome back to the show. As promised, we've got the CEO of Beyond Blue, Kate Carnell. Welcome aboard, Kate. Thanks, it's a pleasure to be here. And tonight, viewers, we're going to be talking about the interaction of psychiatric injuries, psychological injuries with the insurance system. Now, Kate, tell us a bit about Beyond Blue. What, what's it do? Look, Beyond Blue's been around for 12 years now, and our job is to increase awareness of depression and anxiety, to reduce the associated stigma, and to encourage people to seek help. Because you know, a lot of people still don't seek help. They still believe they should be able to pull up their socks and literally get over it. And that isn't the case. Mental health issues, depression and anxiety are just like um, diabetes or asthma or heart disease. You wouldn't think you could just get over those. So you do need to seek help. And nonce, mm. I talk about the interaction between psychiatric injuries and the insurance system. Yeah. What do I mean by that? Well, Tony, as you know, look, a uh, big part of society is, uh, is life insurance, income protection, just insuring, I suppose, in the event of, a, of an injury. And uh, a big prevalent issue is uh, that of mental health. And there's issues about uh, uh, tonight that we'll talk about is, you know, disclosure, uh, your past history of mental health and how that can affect on, uh, you know, your, your insurance policies that you take out. And look, it's a big growing issue. And I'm sure, Kate, you deal with a, a lot of issues in that regard. Look, we do, because lots of... Um policies have these huge catch-all clauses that sort of talk about mental health issues or there's this fantastic one that says stress, insomnia, depression, anxiety, I mean everything you could possibly think mm. of and all of those things produce an exclusion which is obviously stupid. Yeah. Kate, is it fair to say that with this macho mentality of the Australian male that the stigma and also the fact that we don't understand psychiatric injuries, that it goes unnoticed? Look, that's very much the case. Um, stigma in our community is still very high. Since Beyond Blue started 12 years ago, um, we believe that more and more people are talking about depression and anxiety and mental health issues. But unfortunately, the stigma associated with it is still there. And that really stops people disclosing and seeking help when they really need to. Just to put it in perspective, Kate, what type of figures we're talking about in terms of you know the mental health and you know depression, suicide in, in Australia? Like how how big is it? Today in Australia, a million Australians will be experiencing depression, two million an anxiety disorder, and last year about well, over two thousand people died as a result of suicide. That's double the number of people that died on our roads. This is a huge issue. And Beyond Blue is contributing some money to the coroners to investigate so suicide rates and, and fatalities. Kate, you're spending 280000 yeah. in that regard. Sorry, yeah. nonsense. Yeah. You're giving that to the coroner to investigate some suicides from 2009 to 2011. What's that all about? Look, it's a, it's a large amount of money for Beyond Blue. Remember, Beyond Blue is a charity and we rely on the community and corporates mm. uh, for our growth, for our capacity to do these sort of things. But a while ago, the coroner's office came and visited us and told us about some work they wanted to do. Looking back at suicides that had occurred um, over a two year period, 2009, 2010, fundamentally, and look at um, the reasons surround them, surrounding those suicides and also the services that people um, accessed prior to death. And we thought, and they thought by doing that, they would be able to assess or better train services to deal with people who might be at risk in the future. So it's really about saving lives. Okay, just on that issue about services prior to death. Nuncio, we've got a lot of physiotherapists, orthopaedic surgeons, yep. neurosurgeons. We've got a lot of people dealing with the physical injuries in society. What do you think we've got for people that have got psychiatric injuries? What are, the, what are, what are organisations are out there? Look, uh, look, Tony said, uh, actually, I, I, to be honest, I probably wouldn't know of a lot of them, apart from your, your normal psychiatrists and psychologists. Um, look, there's not a lot of forums that I would, you know, be aware of, and that's, I suppose, comes down to, yeah. I suppose, getting the message across uh, to, to those involved and, you know, considering it's so, so widespread. Look, it is so widespread, and that's the reason that Beyond Blue has a telephone number, um, and that's 1300 22 46 36. Now, if you ring that number, and of course it's free, um, there will be an amount of counselling, but also will tell people where they can get um, other support. And I think that's really yeah. important. And Kate, what are you aware of in terms of assistance out there for psychiatrically impaired people? 
Um, there's psychiatric hospitals, obviously, but are there enough of them? Look, there's never enough in this space because treatment is obviously regularly mm. ongoing. Um, people recover from mental health issues, but there's often recurrences from time to time. So this is an ongoing issue for many people. The first port of call is, of course, the GP. The GP will then often refer on, but when it comes to actually inpatient services, we've got a very real problem. And then at the other end of that, step-down facilities are even more of a problem. Nuncio, mm. you're experiencing, being an insurance lawyer, yeah. you're seeing a lot more psychiatrically impaired people these days, is that correct? Oh, look, I said, it's, uh, you know, the inquiries that we receive in relation to, you know, psychiatric injuries uh, and, you know, inquiries in that regard has is, is been immense and um, it's, it's, a tr it's, a, it's, a, it's a trend and unfortunately it's a worrying one at that because you don't want, uh, you don't want those numbers increasing. But and Kate, it, it, goes, it goes beyond just psychiatric in the broad sense. We're talking about bullying, harassment. That's right. Stress claims. What are they costing society? Look, last year, um, just in the, in the, in the um, workplace scenario, stress claims topped $10 billion yes. in our community. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So this is a huge amount of money. If you think about the stress surrounding life, we're getting more and more um, calls from um, fly-in, fly-out workers, people coming back from overseas service, the Afghanistan mm. issue, post-traumatic um, post stress, stress disorder, a range of those things. This is huge in our community. And so, obviously, we've got to start devoting more resources to it, don't you think, Nons? Yeah, of course. And look, it sounds like I know you get some money from the government, but uh, you know, I think it obviously needs to be more allocated because it's, it's such a big issue in, uh, in Australia and, and, and worldwide. Look, it's a huge issue and Beyond Blue really relies on community donations and donations from the corporate sector. Government money is important to us, but it's pretty flat, I have to say. <laughs> of course, of course. And Kate, we're talking about in the year 2009-2010, how many suicides roughly? Um, over those two-year period, around about 4,500 suicides okay. over a two-year period across Australia. That is huge. And amongst young people, you know, and this is Youth Week, um, something like 300 young people died. And Kate, 4,500 people lose their lives, but how many people are actually affected by the loss of life? Look, a huge Thousands. number. Huge yeah. number. And there's a lot of people who attempt suicide. Um, that in itself affects... Um, their parents, their friends, their communities. I don't think too many of us don't know or have been affected by somebody um, dying as a result of suicide or attempting. And no, is this any, like, when we had September 11 mm. and you had 3,000 people die in New York, that touched over 12 million people in New York, that's, that's not to mention everyone outside of New York. So can you imagine 4,500 people is a huge number, isn't it? Uh, it's massive and to be honest, I think that probably doesn't reflect the true no. numbers because there would be so many unreported oh. stats that you just don't, won't be aware of and that's the worrying part. Viewers, we've got to go to a break, so please stay tuned, but also send us your Twitter and Facebook comments about this particular topic and also direct something to Kate if you want. Thank you. Thank you.